chemistry and science, but mostly science. Science Bob Flugfeld. And then if we survive that, they are nominated for not one, but two CMA awards. Their album is called Happy Endings, Old Dominion from the Mercedes-Benz stage. Tomorrow night, Kaylee Cuoco will be here. David Muir from ABC News will join us. And we'll have music from the XX. Our first guest tonight is an Oscar and Golden Globe-nominated Jedi Knight who you should never borrow something from and then forget to return it because he will hunt you down like a dog. His new movie about Richard Nixon and Deep Throat is called Mark Felt, The Man Who Brought Down the White House. If we could get indictments, in your opinion, who would we get? How high? Maybe Attorney General. What about the president? Mark Felt, the man who brought down the White House, opens Friday in New York and L.A. Please welcome Liam Neeson. It's very good to see you. Jedi Knight. What's that? Jedi Knight. Yeah, I Jedi haven't Knight. heard that for a long time. Well, you know, it seems like that's going to follow you for your whole life, Jedi oh, okay. Knight, isn't oh, it? It's 20 years ago. Well, you, it suits you, let's put it that way. How are you doing? I'm doing, uh, yeah, not Everything's too bad. all right? Heaven's okay. You want to lay down and talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you know, we have Science Bob Flugfelder sure, here. Sure, I met him backstage. And I know that you were a teacher at one time, right? I trained abysmally to be a teacher for I two see. years. I see. What was your area of expertise? Well, it was uh, physics. Oh, physics, okay. Uh, a little bit of mathematics and drama. But uh, physics I was interested in. And it's funny, I was talking with Bob backstage. Like, I had this great physics teacher, uh, at school in mm -hmm. Ballymena, County Antrim, Northern Ireland. And uh, I remember he did this, this experiment to show that sound travels in waves, which it does. Right. And the piece of apparatus is called the Kunt's Tube. <laughs> That's K-U-N-D-T-S. <laughs> the gentleman is... Uh, I've been on that website, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, now we, now we can... Yeah, it comes <laughs> Anyway, it's a, it's a glass tube, and there's powder, light powder in the middle of it. Uh-huh. And there's a button at one end, and there's a glass rod goes in. And you know that experiment you do with a, a wine glass with water, and if you wet your finger and go around the top, it makes a, a resonance? It hums, yeah, right, yeah. So you do the same with the glass tube. You rub it with a chamois leather. Uh-huh. Sounds very sexy. <laughs> and it creates a sound, a resonance. And the powder lying on the bottom of the tube forms into little nodes and anti-nodes. I see. And the this... proves that sound travels in waves. And who is it named after? August Kant. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's August Kant. You should get Steven Seagal. He knows the proper as an actor, and you've done many, many things, is it your dream to work with Steven Seagal? Yeah. Is, that, <laughs> is that on your I bucket want, list? I want to know who dyed his hair. <laughs> Stevie well, Wonder. That's all now. <laughs> <laughs> he exclusively works with celebrity Steve, so yeah, it was probably Stevie Wonder. <laughs> no, I was particularly annoyed. Somebody told, some journalist told me in a junket, uh, that was about three, four years ago, I was promoting one of the Tekken movies. Right. That Steven Seagal, this journalist suddenly said, hey, what do you think of Steven Seagal saying you don't know how to punch? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, because you're a boxer. Well, I, yeah, I boxed as a kid, but yeah. I, I know how to punch. Right. Know, like, did he really say that about apparently you? He did, apparently he did. Oh, boy. And he, boy, is he regretting that right now in that <laughs> Halloween costume he's wearing I in Russia? <laughs> Has he really moved to Russia? Yeah, he moved to Russia. I don't know if he moved there or we sent him there and told him not to come back, but... <laughs> 
he seems to be in Russia for whatever reason. It's a weird thing, and certain celebrities, especially ones like Dennis Rodman who dye their hair, go to these countries that aren't necessarily our friends, and oftentimes they don't come back. Maybe he's in trouble. Maybe you could go punch Putin. Wonder, Vladimir wonder. Putin over there and, <laughs> and take care of the whole situation. Well, you know, your movie, which, I, you know, it's funny because a lot of people of a certain age really know what happened with Watergate. They know all the details. But for many years, we didn't know who Deep Throat was. Deep Throat was this great mystery. Yeah. Everybody wondered who was Deep Throat. Yeah. And then this guy told Vanity Fair, I think, that he was Deep Throat. And almost instantly, we forgot who he was. And yeah. we almost didn't care. I know. It was a weird thing. I know. But it's such an interesting story, this character that yeah, you play. Yeah, he was a, a bureaucrat. He was in the FBI for 30 years. He was one of J. Edgar Hoover's right-hand man. Mm -hmm. uh, he had he a lot was, of secrets uh, on a people. A lot of secrets on a lot of presidents, on, on a lot of people. And um, I think when the whole Watergate chicanery was happening, uh, and President Nixon wanted to stop the FBI investigation into Watergate, he crossed the line. Nixon crossed the line, uh -huh. interfering with the FBI process. But so, no president would ever do that, anything like that again. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you think, you, of course, you learn from history, and that will never be repeated. Well, History does have a, yeah, it does repeat itself, doesn't it? I wonder if there's a Mark Felt out there somewhere. I think there's a few. You think there are, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, have you gained any insight into that situation as a result of being part of this movie? Into the present Into situation? what's going on over there. Um, I try and follow it. Uh-huh, uh, I see. And I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's just, uh, things are going to unravel, let's put it that way. Uh, some, some political anal analysis I saw the other week, uh, he was asked about was there collusion between Russia and, and the Trump administration, and he said, well, look, there's no smoke without fire, and there's a hell of a lot of smoke. Yeah, but these so, people also told us Hillary Clinton was going to win, so who the hell knows what's going to happen, right? <laughs> it's what we call a clot twist, is what it is. Well, it's very good to see you. Thank you for my flies. I will use them and cherish them. The movie is called Mark Felt, The Man Who Brought Down the White House. It opens in New York and L.A. on Friday. Liam Neeson, everybody. We'll be right back. Also has a very particular set of skills, but it's a, a totally different set. He is a teacher turned exploder of things who is here to educate and potentially endanger us. Please welcome Science Bob Flugfelder. Hello, Science Bob. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, excitement for science. This is your 15th time on the show. Did you know that? Wow. We still have all of our fingers so and everything. Far, it's yeah. really wonderful. Wow. What are we going to do here tonight? All right. Science uh, Bob. So you, uh, you know, I love my favorite liquid, liquid nitrogen. You do love liquid I nitrogen. I do like liquid yeah. nitrogen. You are the number um, one consumer of liquid nitrogen. <laughs> probably in the I county. I know, yes. Uh, hey, grab me those gloves, would you? Go ahead, okay. let's put some gloves on. All right. And uh, so this is a container of liquid nitrogen. So nitrogen is about 80% of what we breathe. Okay. And so if we, uh, if they compress that, it gets very, very cold. Uh, and it's 321 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. It's very, very, very it's cold. cold. Yes. yes. Like if that was so, a pool, you'd never get in there. You'd never know. <laughs> It'd be the last thing you did. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, if you pour this on the ground or if you pour this on a flat surface, you can go ahead and give it a little try. Do? And you'll see how it dances across. Yeah. And yeah. almost like anti-gravity, right? Yeah, it's great. So that we, there's a name for that. It's what? called the Leidenfrost effect. Oh. Leidenfrost effect. Oh, is, so, he, is that re any relation to August Kuntz? <laughs> no, 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 I don't know if they ever got along oh. or not. Uh, so I thought I would give you a, a little try at home experiment. Okay. A little try at home experiment. Mm -hmm. These are uh, little uh, polymer orbs. So they start off as little BBs. You put them in water overnight and they get these little squishy polymer orbs. Where do you get these? Uh, you know, florists use them. Use oh. them. You can get them at toy stores because they're sort of a toy item. Okay. So you can get them. And if you take that and put it, we have a very hot pan. Put it this in This is there? like liquid nitrogen going on, uh, on a surface because the floor to liquid nitrogen is super, super hot. So if you put that in there, what ends up happening? <laughs> you, you try another. I be more gentle. You can yeah. take, you take your gloves off. I got the gloves. Oh, yeah. why did you tell me to put the gloves I, on? Well, for the frost. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Oh, they're so free, huh? Yeah. So that goes in there. Okay. And what happens? See how it dances around? Yes. So when it touches the pan, it, it emits a little burst of steam. Okay. And that actually gets it dancing around. You can put some more in it. All right. 
Oh, look at that. Isn't that, Isn't that, that wonderful? Wow. And how long will they go on like that? As long as there's heat there until they all dry up. Well, you know, you could, you know, try at home. You need a very hot pan. Uh-huh, yeah, sure. Be careful. Boy, the kids would love that, huh? Yeah. That, yeah. I like the sound. Yeah, I could watch this for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have channels with weird stuff like this, and you could, okay, all so right, good, just, all right. Know, let it cool off. All right. Wow, it's like haunted jelly beans. All right. So, I don't know how long it takes to stop. All right, well, we'll find out, I guess. All right, so now we're going to take that idea yeah. and uh, we're going to uh, use, show another cool feature about liquid nitrogen, which is that it expands a lot when it goes from liquid to gas. Okay. And we're going to kind of take advantage of that. Should I put my gloves back on? Uh, yeah, we got new gloves if you want. Oh, great. Wow, These different cool. gloves for everything, huh? How All about right. that? So uh, what you're going to do is uh, I've got a little container of liquid nitrogen here. Okay. And then I've got a uh, ping pong ball. Why do they look like that? Well, you'll see why, because I've poked a tiny little hole inside of one side, the yellow side, and another one inside the black one. Okay. And what we want to do is fill it up with liquid nitrogen as much as we can, and then when it expands, the jets of gas, like nitrogen gas, will come out of here, and that should cause it to spin around. Awesome. All right, so grab a little uh, clamp here. Okay. And we're going to, you can pick up one of those. All so right. the yellow and black kind of helps us know whether or not it's spinning. I see. Okay. All right. So Very good. go ahead and dip that underneath so it's Hold fully it submerged. Yep. Okay. Submerge that in here. I'll get one too. So we got a, another one. So now, because the uh, air in there is compressing, it's drawing in the liquid nitrogen. Yeah, I know. And so we get a little bit in there. <laughs> All right. And uh, that should be good enough. Go ahead and uh, pop that into that tray there. Okay. What if we put one in the frying pan? Would anything crazy happen? Oh, look at that. Yeah, isn't that great? That is good. All right, let's see another one. Yes, yeah. We can see that spinning effect. Yeah. All right. There we go. And now... So... We have... I'll show you a different version of it. Okay, good. All right. So this is a larger version of a Heroes engine. Okay. And so normally, again, they'd put a little water in here, they'd put some steam, and then we have opposing jets here that would then spin it around. But we don't really have time for the whole heat thing. Okay. So we are going to use our liquid nitrogen. Thank you. All right. You know it gets serious when the masks come out. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you enjoy chocolate milk? What? Chocolate milk? Can't hear you. you chocolate. <laughs> so let's say you go to make a little bit of chocolate milk, right? This and is not how I do it. This is not? No, we use a spoon. Oh, well, see, that's the thing. What if you <laughs> don't have a spoon? Okay. So here, take that. All right. So uh, pour in chocolate milk. I don't know how much chocolate you like in there. A, a lot is the answer. All right. That's good. Okay. All right. So what if you want chocolate milk and you don't have a spoon? Hmm? You don't have a spoon, but yep. you do have a 12-inch stainless steel sphere and some liquid nitrogen. This is the way to go. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll tell you what, would you measure out, uh, fill that cup up with uh, some liquid nitrogen? All right. Well, where will we get liquid nitrogen? Oh, right here. Okay, All right. Go to your pantry. There you go. Okay. All right. And now we're going to pour that into our Heroes engine. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah, it's going in. Is that enough? Yeah. Let's do all of it. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's really blow the lid off this thing. Okay. okay. All right. Which we actually might do. Okay. All right. There we go. And again, we're making chocolate milk. It's true. <laughs> At the end of this... At the end of this demonstration, there will be a glass of chocolate milk. All right, let's see if we have any better luck here. Mm -hmm. We're going to really get that. We're going to give a little head start. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think, I think it's... Oh, I can feel it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going, Jimmy. It's going. Look at it. Here we go. Wait! Wait! Why did we put too much in? Hold on, I'll get the tongs! I'm going in! I'm going in! I'm going in! Hold on! All right! Ah! Wow! It's incredible! Yes! Science bodies, we're gonna, when we come back, yeah. What are we gonna? We're gonna have fire when we come there back, right? There will be fire. We're gonna have fire when we come back. We'll be right back.
<laughs> dressed like baked potatoes. Why are we dressed like this? What are these? Uh, these are fire suits, and uh, they're not just uh, for show. We actually will need these. And why isn't anyone else in a fire suit? <laughs> no, we're just putting ourselves. We're going to be releasing toxic gas into the studio. Just try to hold your breath for about five minutes or so. Everybody will be fine. fine. Everyone will be great. What are we going to do here? What's the All plan? All right, so uh, a long time ago, I, this is one of these wonderful scientific accidents. Okay. And uh, this is... Just regular cotton, just like uh, any cotton like you'd find. But uh, there was a little accident, and it got mixed, uh, this is back in like the 1800s, got mixed with some uh, uh, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. That happens to me sometimes, yeah. And it creates, of course, nitrocellulose. Of and course. nitrocellulose changes the molecular bonds of this, and instead of becoming cotton, it becomes gun cotton. Okay, goo, gun yeah, cotton, I like it. gun that. cotton. Okay. And it burns, uh, burns much, much different. So if you were to burn this... With just regular, you know, just light regular cotton, probably take a minute or two to burn. But you got to, uh, if you can get one of those little lighters there, and I'll hold this out, and we'll see how gun cotton burns. All right. This is now burning gun cotton. Jeez. What the hell? I know. Isn't that it great? didn't burn, it disappeared. I know, and no, uh, no smoke, no ashes. Uh, so It's the perfect crime. <laughs> They, uh, so they actually ended up using this in World War II. They would use this in battleships, and uh, so it's pretty cool. Okay. So uh, if you take that and you compress it, then you get more of something like a weapon. Oh, great. All right? Mm -hmm. So we've got a little gun cotton at the bottom of this, and we thought, all right, we could just shoot it off, and magicians sometimes use this stuff. Okay. But let's have a little fun with it. So behind us is a series of 32 balloons. Right. However, unlike being filled with air or helium, these are filled with hydrogen gas, which is... Kind of flammable. Okay, great. So we're gonna, we're gonna. You're gonna this have could you, have killed that clown in the movie It. I <laughs> know. So we're gonna have you fire some gun cotton at that first balloon. Great. That's gonna explode, and we're gonna see if we can create a chain reaction that will blow all these balloons. I would love to. If it works, it'll go in like a second. Okay. But we've never actually tried it at this scale. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So Do I need to put this on? Uh, yeah, so let's get this on. Okay. And these uh, hydrogen burns at about 1,000 degrees. Everybody knows, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn and face that balloon, and then come down on your knee, sniper style. Now, are you putting that thing up my butt? <laughs> here, right. come on down. Okay. Bend down here. All right. Here we go. That's great. All right. All right, here is here's your, uh, your Harry Potter wand. Okay. All right, I'm going to light the end of it. All right. And you're just going to point it at that balloon. Are you okay. ready? I'm ready, yeah. Here we go. In three, two, one. How about that? Woo! <laughs> Instant replay. Look at that. Wow, this is how we're going to defeat North Korea, everybody. <laughs> Science, Bob. Much appreciated. Sure. We'll be right back with music from Old Dominion.